The most profound thing that I did in the past mm. five years was unfollow all of my friends. I don't follow any of my friends. Alex, I've been best friends with him for how many fucking years? Like 12 years. I unfollowed him on Instagram. Everybody, I got hundreds of messages from my friends, from my high school friends. Why'd you unfollow me? I don't understand. I'm like, you don't post anything that educates me or inspires me to be a, be a better human being. Well, but we're... How are you going to... If I give a fuck about you and you give a fuck about me, I'll reach out to you. I'll call you. I'll text you. I don't need to see pictures of your ass in the <laughs> Bahamas. I don't need to like and comment on your post for you to know that I care about you. If you need me to follow you, to like your post, to comment, you're so pretty, for you to know that I care about you, that's a you problem. I'm not going to follow you because comparing my life to your fluffed up highlight reel of who you are is only going to make me feel shitty about me. But B, I don't want to become addicted to these platforms and... No longer spend my time doing things that are actually empowering me to be a better human being, to be to become more successful, to become more fulfilled. Dude, I do that all the time. Do what? So what's been your big, like, I don't know, because I feel like I have, like, a couple messages that I kind of, like, vibe with every single week. Yeah. What are some that you're vibing with this week? Um, the thing that's been on my mind a lot has been, I just keep thinking about it. When I came here, I uh, was it yesterday? Two days ago? Two days ago, uh, I was with Alex, mm. and we went um, into you know, breakers. We mm. were just playing pool, playing. Yeah. Like we had a little tournament. It was we were just fucking around, whatever. And then as we're walking out, I, he was like, "Oh, is that the podcast room?" I was like, "Oh yeah." I was like, "I was just like, hey, let's walk in there real quick. I'll show you yeah. like where we record, whatever." And when we walked in. There was a guy in the radio station, sure. and he. Um, he was like, hey, man, like, how's it going? Like, introduce himself, whatever. And he uh, he had me on the radio. He, oh, he, wow. he just, he's like, hey, yeah, shout out the podcast, whatever. And I was like, okay, cool. And um, and he was just asking me what I like about podcasting and stuff. And I was like, well, I love it because, you know, we can talk and it's recorded. So then, you know, when you know, because people are busy and when, you know, they have mm. time to, they can listen yeah, to it. Yeah. Rather than, you know, and it's not to take a shot at radio, but, you know, oh, yeah, radio's yeah. one and done. And I was like, so, you know, people can listen to it as many times as they want, whenever they can. They could pause it, play it, yada, yada. That's why I really like podcasting, and so that people can do it at their own time. And I was like, well, why do you like radio? He's like, well, because you can only hear it once. Mm. He's like, it's up and then it's gone. And I was like, oh, so cool. Fuck. Wow. I was like, he's like, then it's gone forever. And I was like, dang. Wow. That's so cool. I didn't uh, think about it like that. And he didn't even uh, elaborate. And I was like, and it just, it, the moment was like so rich. And I was yeah. Like, Holy fuck. Dang. He's like, it's like the yeah. reason why I like podcasting is the exact opposite reason why he loves the radio. And it's such a good metaphor for life because it's like, you know, life is the radio. It's not a podcast. You can't push it on pause. Mm. It is what it is and it's gone. And when he told me, he's like, yeah, the reason why I like talking on radio rather than on podcasts is because. You get to say it, and you get to say it once, and then it's gone yeah. forever. And if the listener heard it, they heard it. If they didn't, they didn't, and that's it. Mm. It just really resonated yeah, with me because yeah. you know, that is how life is. Yeah. And when you're on the radio and you're speaking, you're so present. Mm. You're, it, it's like, you know, when, when I was talking to him, I felt different because yeah. it was like when I was, you know, giving my message on the radio for those, you know, three minutes that I had, I was like, fuck, like, this is it. Like, it's one take. And it's such a, like I said, it's such a good metaphor for how you should be living. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if you're going to be in the radio station room, you're not going to be sitting there saying, okay, you know what, I'll just take it easy. Because there are no retakes. Like you and I, right? Like if we, you know, had... Just before this. Right, like literally. Like how many times do we retake the episode? Like if this was on the radio, yeah. and we knew, like let's say we had all our listeners listening to the radio for that one time, yeah, we would fucking go in. Like every yeah, time, yeah. it would be so different mm -hmm. because we just have one shot. Mm. That's it. Yeah. Then it's gone. Then it's over. It doesn't matter. Like if we're in a giggly mood, we're gonna be like, "Fuck!" Like no, like move on. Mo yeah, like yeah. the people are listening, and this is, this is it. This is the one opportunity we have. Yeah. And I was like, "Holy fuck!" Like it just reminds you, you know, that you're just not living up to your potential. And it's just like hmm. because. <clears throat> Do you think a lot of people are kind of in like just using the podcast as like a metaphor? Do they think they can put life on pause? Mm -hmm. Do they think they can? Do you think they understand that? You, like, for instance, like being on the radio, you have one take, like you have one shot at life. Yeah. Do you think a lot of people recognize that, or do you think people feel like they're kind of invincible and they're never going to die, and they can kind of, since they believe they're infinite, even though they're not? Yeah. Do they think they have 
time for say like procrastination and things like that? Uh, I think people inherently know it. Yeah. But I think that they don't believe it because mm. in my eyes, the be- your beliefs are how you behave. Yeah. Like how you yeah, act out absolutely. your reality is how, what you it shows what you believe, what you have faith in, how, and how you yeah, think yeah, yeah. is is based on how you act. Mm-hmm. Um, because you can ask anybody, no one thinks realistically that they're going to live forever. But they don't live that way. Yeah. Right. That's why people settle for a career that they don't care about. That's why people, you know, don't exercise and and, and take care of their body. Mm-hmm. That's why people get into relationships with people that they know aren't good for them. That's why they will party and drink hedonistically for months on end instead of doing the things that they know they should be doing. That's why people don't hold the door for other people because they live life in a way where they are acting it out in a sense where they are behaving as if they're infinite mm-hmm. when in reality they're not. Yeah. And I think a lot of times that comes from just the everydayness of so many things that life presents. Like, you know, you, you like, you know, the everydayness of, you know, you interacting with your mom, for example. You it happens every day and it's never not happened. Mm-hmm. So over time you take it for granted. Yeah. But if you knew for sure that your mom was going to die tomorrow, <laughs> how would you act with your mom today? It'd be so different. Yeah, absolutely. But the yeah. truth of the matter is, is, as corny as it sounds, tomorrow has never been guaranteed for you. Yeah. It's never been guaranteed for you. Yeah. Right? And, and this is like why I love dogs so much. Mm-hmm. is because they act that way. Yeah. They act that way. Every time you see your dog, they act like it is the first time they've seen you in fucking years. Yeah. But it's the reality of life that it was never guaranteed that you were going to come home and give them another treat or pet them again like it was never guaranteed and so they act that way and that's why people love dogs so much is because they act that way they act in the manner where life is finite whether they know it or not they maybe they do maybe they don't i don't know but that's how they behave and that's why it's so amazing and and that's why you know, that's why people say all the time we don't deserve dogs because they act that way and we don't we take things for granted when we shouldn't I, I posted something on my Twitter. Let me actually read it because this was it, it just fucking hit yeah. me so hard. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It was. Was it the airport thing? Yep. Yeah. Airports see more sincere kisses than wedding halls. Hospitals hear more sincere prayers in churches. Don't let your love wait until it's on the line. Yeah. And it's because tomorrow isn't guaranteed. Mm. Because we sit here and we have the things that have such everydayness to it so that to the point where we allow it to become habitual and just think of it as this, you know, this is just my relationship with my mom. This is just my relationship with my brother. This is just how it is. We, like, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to see him tomorrow at the breakfast table. Mm. So it doesn't matter. I can just be like, yeah, whatever. Good night. See ya. Mm. And just say it like <clears throat> that. But the reality is you don't know if you're going to wake up tomorrow. You have no fucking idea. When you don't remind yourself of that and when you don't behave in that way, that's when you're really going to start taking life for granted and not get the fullness of it because mm. you're going to choose to be experiencing it in a way where you're not experiencing the love that is there the whole time. Mm-hmm. And that's why I posted that of airports get the most sincere kisses because they're leaving. That person is gone yeah, yeah, and you're yeah, not yeah. going to see them. Mm-hmm. And you don't know if you ever see them again. That's why you see these, you know, reactions when people come home from from war or, or leaving from war. Mm-hmm. Those reactions are you that you that hits you. But why? Because it's a reminder that life is finite. You don't have forever. It's not guaranteed. And when your life and when your your significant other's life is on the line, it really sets in stone of like, oh fuck, this could be it. But it's always that. That airport hug is always that. When you and I say goodbye to each other today, it could be the last time. I could mm-hmm. be walking into into my building and just get hit by a fucking bus, and that's it. Mm-hmm. That's wraps. And for us to walk around as if that's not a possibility is insane. But we all fall guilty to it because we're human beings. But the more you can remind yourself of that, the more you're going to wake up and say, I'm going to live my life in a way where it's meaningful and I'm doing the most to not only live happily, but to make the world a better place. Yeah. And I think that's like just gratitude, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's... Because yeah. you, the more you recognize the, the great things in your life, even though you can't force that feeling onto yourself, right? Like, 
I can't force our relationship to just feel special, right? Like, but through me recognizing it, through me making that kind of conscious realization, like, damn, dude, I'm so lucky to meet a guy like Jason who's aligned with my interests, who is just a great human being and who's like literally my ride or die for life. You know what I mean? It's like, or, you know, my mom, like who's lit, same way, you know, was so invested in me, always caring, always allowing me to just do what I want. Right. And, and I think a lot of times, like, like you said, it's a lot of people just always focus on what they don't have. Right. And so many times when we just focus on what we don't have, we feel so lost. We feel so inadequate because we don't have this thing. Right. And even when we do get that thing, couple of days go by, you'll get used to it, right? Like a new camera, a new computer, a new exactly. car, right? It's like, not only do you have all these great things in your life, right? You, you realize you already have everything you need, right? Materialistically speaking, right? Obviously not everyone's in the same boat, but if you can just kind of pinpoint the things that you have within your life that are great from the relationships to the materialistic things while also realizing that you are finite as it is, right? So you only got one shot at this life, right? You, what you do with it is up to you, right? And it's like, but also at the end of the day too, obviously it's very important to chase your dreams. It's very important to do what you want and create a life that way you're not like bogged down and super unhappy. But I think also too, no matter what spot you're in, if you can really just look at it for what it is and highlight all the great things in your life. Cause trust me, I don't care what situation you're in. Someone has got it worse. Right. Someone does. And I think it's important to recognize that someone would kill to be in your spot, right? Rather, whether, whether you're in the projects or whether you're in a middle-class family like us, or you're, you're, you know, cause like we are incredibly lucky the position we're in. Like, I mean, we're literally, we're so lucky, dude. Yeah. I mean, and every single day I kind of, I, I, I even find myself in that trap of not remembering all that I have, right? And I think I think it goes even deeper than just yeah. the materialistic level, right? Yeah. People realize, like, just look at their life. They just, they feel so incomplete, right? Because they look at social media. They look at TV, reality TV, the Kim K, you know, basketball players. They're like, oh, my God, they've got such an amazing life. I wish I had their life like that. And then they just devalue everything around them, right? Like you exist. You, yeah, exactly. You fucking exist, dude. Like that that alone is amazing, right? And it's just like when you go outside and you don't even pay attention to the trees. You don't even pay attention to the birds chirping. You don't even pay attention to the grass on the ground. You see no value in that. And all you're focusing on is this idea in your head of the glamorous life. The life that you think you want, but when you actually get it, it's going to make you fucking miserable, right. right? Because you don't recognize that inherent value within yourself and you don't recognize that you are life itself. And the fact that you are alive is an amazing miracle in itself. So I think just having gratitude for everything, both on the spiritual level, the materialistic level, relationship level is just so important because it'll, it'll just help you understand that you are finite and you only have right. one shot at this and life isn't going to pause, even though you may want it to. Right. It, a lot. Whenever people would say to me, like, or, or whenever I get into a conversation with someone and they're always talking about the Kardashians or certain celebrities or athletes yeah. or, or people that are famous and, and, and talking about them in a way where, oh, I just fucking wish yeah. I could live a life like them. It always, just the first thing I think about is you just are so uneducated. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's man. unbelievable. Because if you were to listen to even an hour of them talking about their lifestyle compared to pre-fame and post-fame, 90% of the time, they prefer the life where they were anonymous and yeah, where they can go to the store dude, and, so and, true, and live man. life as if they were a normal human being. Yeah. 90% of them say that shit. Mm -hmm. Fame is fun for them for about a fucking year. And then yeah. how many parties can you go to? How many hot models yeah. can you fuck? How many yachts can you buy until what's next? Yeah. It's because you're a human being. You can't just live here, you know. Jordan Peterson talks about it. He's like, he's like, what do, you, what kind of life do you want? Do you want to make so much money so then all you can do is be a, a grown up baby and with a golden bottle sitting on your back and just suck? Yeah. Like, no, that's not what we're built for. We're not built for that. We're meant. We're built to climb a hill. That's why we experience dopamine when we make progress, not when we sit there and experience just fucking, just 
unearned pleasures. That's why TikTok is so dangerous. That's why yeah. the reels are so dangerous. Is because you're feeling this dopamine yeah. as if you, as if it's like trick. It's like tricking your system into believing that you're making the progress towards towards the things that you need because you're just experiencing the dopamine. But there's nothing that you had to chase. And that's why it's so empty after you put the phone down. That's why you feel that feeling in your brain of like, holy shit. What did I just do for four hours? Yeah. Because you're, it, it was useless. You're being useless to yourself and to everybody else. We're meant to climb uphill. And when you sit in this position where you say, oh, fuck, I wish I could have the money that Floyd Mayweather has. or I wish I could live a life of Elon Musk that Elon Musk lives. Or they're so privileged. Or I wish I could have it like them. You really are just super un- un- uneducated on, on what their lives are like. It's like, first of all, you want to live life like Elon Musk? You want to work 16 hours a day, have a poor relationship with your family, have a poor relationship with the people that are around you, have are unable to accept any sort of plans or opportunities other than work? That's what you want? You really think that? Like, if you were to fucking follow around Elon Musk for one fucking day, you would run. You would run. You'd say, fuck the billions of dollars. I don't care. You wouldn't want it. If you were to spend a, life, a, a week in the life of Elon Musk or any of these guys that have all this money and all this fame and success, you wouldn't fucking want it. Because 99% of you, rightfully so, wouldn't want to work like that, wouldn't want to live like that, wouldn't want to walk around and be unable to just live your own life. Like, how many autographs or selfies would you have to take until you're sick of it? Like, it sounds fucking awesome. Like, no, 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 you don't understand. I would really want to live the life of Charlie D'Amelio. No, you fucking wouldn't. Like, what's amazing to me, I keep seeing these clips of Justin Bieber when he was, you know, in his teens and early 20s, and how fucking harassed... That man was. He was harassed all day, every day, from everybody around him. Would you really want to trade lives with him? Like, you really got to think about it. Like, l- listen to the interviews, read the books, read the biographies. The people's lives that you think, th- that you look up to, are not fucking glamorous. They appear glamorous because of the fame and the success and the money and the material things. But if you were to switch shoes with them, you would run. You would never want it. And that's why I keep saying you're uneducated when you make those statements. Yeah. And, man, like, it's just it's just such a real perspective to have, you know. And because, like, I even find myself, and I'm sure you do, falling into that same trap of yeah. chasing the fame, chasing kind of that glamorous life, more money, more business. You know, like, that's, like, that's the standard. Like, that's just how we've been conditioned, right? It's just, like, like, we just want to up our level of quality of life. So, like, whether that be moving to another state, getting a house, getting these materialistic things, right? It's just, right. like, we're subconsciously programmed right. in that way. Right. And it's, like, when you make that kind of conscious realization that <laughs> this is, like, <laughs> that's not the way life is meant to be. And right. me- meaning, like, that is not the trajectory that you have to be on. And you can you can move to the countryside, not download social media, not become a content creator, work on a farm. I mean, like, just, you know, like live your right. own life. Right. You know what I mean? And like, this is a message for myself as well as other people too. And it's just, it's, it's, I mean, we say it so many times, like everyone has their own blueprint, you know what I mean? Like, their own way of life, you know? And it's, it's just, I feel like when you were bringing up that type of perspective where we just kind of fall into the trap of like, okay, there's this one kind of trajectory path where you, where your goal is to move from the lower class to the middle class to the higher class. Right. And it's just like your, your goal is to climb the pyramid, right? Like to move into the top 1%. And then you just kind of chuck that whole pyramid out the window. It's just like, no dude, like I just want to live my own life out in the forest in New Hampshire or something like along those lines. And to me, it just frees up so much breathing room, right? Yeah. And it just gives you so much space to really understand that you don't have to live, you don't have to feel so inadequate when thinking about yourself, right? And it's even when you are thinking about yourself, right? You're thinking of an image in your head. Like you're not even thinking about yourself. You're thinking about a thought of you, right? And it's like, of course, it's important to have that identity, but also too. I heard today from Ryan Holiday. He's like, don't, don't attach your, don't be an identity, right? Like be yourself, right? Like be a free agent, you know, and do different things. Like don't attach yourself to one ideology. And I know this is kind of going off on a little side tangent, but essentially like with me saying that, like don't attach yourself to believing this one concrete pyramid, right? Like 
understand that you, there are different ways of life. There's what makes you happy, right? Is what makes you happy, right? And there's, if you want to live a simple life and people are judging you for that, dude, like if you're happy and you have no complaints and you like living a simple life, right? Where, I mean, whether, whether you want to continuously challenge yourself and make progression, depending on what your life is, right? That that could definitely be examined, but like, there's nothing wrong with living a simple life. There's nothing wrong with living a busy life, right? It all comes down to what you care about, right? And what your priorities and goals are at the end of the day. But with me saying that, it's it's just really important for people to keep in mind that people have these different ways of life and there's not one concrete pyramid that you need to be striving towards. And I think just by being like this quote unquote free agent, by being this kind of person that can look at different ways of life and respect those different ways of lives just gives you such a breath of fresh air. And I, I can't say it enough, but I just feel like sometimes like, you know, cause I mean, I have this job right now. Right. And pretty much I just feel like even today, like when I went to go every day, I usually go down to like the little uh, riverside uh, by like the greenhouse. And I like, like during my lunch break and I usually like just sit in the sun there and like meditate for the nice, like 20 to 30 minutes. Right. And I was just like, I compared there to my house because like when I'm when I'm at my house, I like to go out my backyard. Right. And like ground. Right. And so pretty much like take off my shoes and socks. Right. And so I was like, what if I did this now? Like while I was working as a employee here, Mm. that would be like so frowned upon. Right. It's just like the difference there and just that kind of judgment of my own right from other people that want to put me into this concrete box of what it means to be a ccsu employee right Right. like if you see a ccsu employee meditating on grass outside during their lunch break you'll be like is this guy okay right like there's i mean i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that right or saying like you should or shouldn't do that i mean i definitely would like that um but it's just kind of putting people in this kind of concrete mold that doesn't allow them to be themselves right and it's just like it's just this denial of authenticity and i just to me it just it's it's i feel like it's a very frequent occurrence that a lot of people fall into yeah i I mean as you're speaking it immediately makes me think about the fact that i just i hate that i'm the worst example for this (laughs) because because i i am the path that I'm on is so aligned with what society puts on a yeah. fucking pedestal yeah. to the point where I can't say, no, don't do what I'm fucking yeah. doing. Like, do what makes you feel fulfilled because this is what makes you feel. I'm, I'm a competitive little stubborn Italian boy. Yeah. That's always been me. That's why it feels great. Like, building a business and doing these things that I'm doing now is just what I – like, it's so fulfilling. Like, it, like to me, like, where did I hear this? I don't even know who said it. Probably Jordan Peterson. Who fucking knows? He was like, <laughs> so, he's like, there's some people that it doesn't matter where you put them. They're just going to want to compete. Yeah. That's all they're going to want to do. You put them in a forest with an ax and that's all they have for life. They're going to chop down as many trees as they can because they just want to be the best at chopping down trees. Because like, that's just who they are. It yeah. doesn't matter where you put these people. That's what they do. Yeah. And so for me, that's what I am. I'm just competitive. Yeah. That's it. But it's I'm far and few. I don't say that because I'm way better than anybody else because I'm not. But you look at someone like Gary Vee, for example. The enjoyment that he gets out of going to a garage sale, buying something for a dollar and selling it for five is insane. That's just how he loves to live his life. He doesn't need to... He's losing so much money going to those garage sales and flipping things than Mm -hmm. he is if if he were to build another business or work on the business he's doing now or go to another meeting. It's what he loves doing. He's competitive. He loves to do it. He feels fulfilled by those things. But then we put those things on a standard as if we, we put those things on a pedestal as if that's the way we should be living yeah. our lives because he is the money and the success and the, fa- and the fame that we think we want. And so I say that because when I'm in this spot now where that's what I'm chasing, it's the pursuing. That's, I wouldn't even say that. It's like it, it's going to come to me as a byproduct of what yeah. I'm enjoying pursuing. Yeah. Sports videography and building the business is so much fun to me. Mm. You're not going to beat me. I'm loving it. You're not. <laughs> you can't. So for you to put me on a pedestal is just—it's ludicrous. Mm. If you're happy in a nine to five playing on thirteen softball teams, you should do that. You shouldn't look at me or anybody else as if that's the life I want to live. Because then you're going to put yourself in a spot where you're feeling miserable. Because of this own paradigm that you put as if that's how life should be. Mm-hmm. No. Life should be what's fulfilling to you. Are you being a good person? 
are you pursuing what's meaningful to you? And if you're not, you really need to reevaluate why you're living the way you're living. Why? Why are you doing it? Why are you getting lip injections? Like Because, dude. <laughs> it's like, motherfucker, are you looking at the people you're idolizing? Yeah. Why are you idolizing these people? Yeah. Do you think you'd want to live a life in their shoes? Nine times out of ten, the answer is fucking no. Yeah. You're uneducated on what their lives are like. Mm-hmm. Like, it's cute. Like, it takes me two seconds to say, working 17 hours a day. And it sounds like working 17 hours a day. That's what it sounds like. That's not how the life is lived. When you look at fucking Elon Musk and look at how much he works and how much money he makes, it sounds cute until you're working 17 hours a fucking day. You wouldn't last half a day in his shoes. You wouldn't because you're not Elon Musk. But it's easy to look at that and be like, no, it's fine. I want to be the richest person in the world. I would totally gladly switch places with him. You really fucking wouldn't. And that's why you need to educate yourself on what their lives look like. Mm. I've been obsessively learning about this stuff for years. And that's why I've come to the conclusion of, oh shit, none of it matters. Pursue what I find meaningful. But then that's why I started this whole, my whole spiel with, I hate that it's me. I wish that there was somebody else like that doesn't have fame or success or massive amounts of influence or, or money or whatever, because What's crazy is yeah. it's so tempting too. Like <laughs> it's the life, the paradigm that we're currently operating in yeah. is the most tempting one. The yeah. money, the fame, the woman, the, the men, the yeah. glamour, the fame, like everything, right? It's just so tempting. It's at least from first glance, right? So it's like when you're a million miles away and you see the sun, right? It's like, wow, so amazing, right? You move closer and closer and closer to it. It just starts to burn you up. You know right. what I mean? It's like, fuck, dude, like this, this is not what I thought it was, right? And so it's like your interpretation of that versus what reality actually is, is that big distinction there, right? And so, but also too, in those type of circumstances, when people of fame, people of quote unquote fame, right, of like higher status than you in that specific area, according to you, they're just like you. They shit, they poop, they pee, they go to bed for eight hours, right? Like, maybe not, probably because they're fucking, (laughs) you know, really, really need more significance if, like, that's what they're pursuing, you know? And it's like, they're just like us at the end of the day, too. And it's like, a lot of times we just kind of objectify these celebrities, right? And so we just, we kind of forget about their individuality, right? Like, their own uniqueness, too. Like, Tom Brady, when he gets up on it, his Instagram or he does a press conference, right? He's very politically correct, right? That's not who Tom Brady really is, right? right. That's just how, who, how he presents himself, right? right? And in order for him to keep making money, in order for him to stay politically correct, that's what he needs to do, right? In order to, you know, not, not cause any, you know, boats or maybe he does intentionally to, you know, for PR moves or something like along those lines, like him retiring and then coming back, like, you know, like some, something along those lines. It's just a lot of times we don't even see our celebrities, quote unquote, authentic selves, right? And so through us like objectifying these celebrities and putting ourselves on this path to become like them, not only are you not seeing their authentic self, but you're not even seeing your own authentic self, which in my opinion is the biggest robbery, right? Like, and that's pretty much the whole goal of spirituality. You know what I mean? It's like helping you uncover your authentic self, right? And it's like, when, I don't know I, about you, but like, it took me a really long time to uncover who I really was, you know, like authentically and allow that to flow externally. Right. And right. it's like, I used to be caught in that trap of like looking up to like Logan Paul and like all these other guys, right. And all these vloggers and things like along those lines, like when I was a lot younger um, and into my like mid teen years. Right. And like, just constantly be like, oh my God, what I'm doing isn't enough. My life sucks. Right. Like, and just thinking of ways I could be significant. And then that translates to me, I don't even know, like posting on my story for significance and doing things for the wrong reason and not actually pursuing things like working out, video editing, because I genuinely cared about them. And then when I have my spiritual awakening and, or shift in awareness, I like to say in about 28, uh, 20, not 2018, probably 2020. Yeah. 2020. That's when I just, I really like, I guess you could say shattered that pyramid, right? And I sh- I shattered that idea of wanting to become like a celebrity, even though I still do feel traces of it in me today because, you know, we literally do this for a living, you know what I mean? It's unfortunate that we ended up on this kind of path, but right. 
we're pursuing it from an angle of authenticity. You know what I mean? We're pursuing it in, at an angle of we're doing things for the right reason, meaning we're doing things because we, we're pursuing content creation. We're pursuing self-improvement, sports, videography, because we genuinely care about it. And whatever is like a byproduct of that, such as money, such as fame, followers, whatever you want to say, is just a byproduct, right? It's an unintended consequence. And when you, like I was talking about before, when you kind of shatter that pyramid, you really recognize your own value, right? You really recognize how whole and complete you are and how much you really love yourself, right? And you really start to develop habits and behaviors where you stop caring about what other people think, right? And through, so through you stop caring about what other people think, right? You really shatter that pyramid and and it really just reflects back into you because now your attention's all on you and now you can just focus on doing you and not giving a fuck about any other path that you might need to go down, right? And, and and funny enough, this path just kind of reveals itself to you. Like, I didn't know I wanted to become a sports videographer. Like, I didn't know I wanted to become a content creator. Or I didn't know how much I'd be in a meditation or all these different types of things. And it just kind of uncovered itself to me just by me doing the most simple things, right? Just by me take shifting my attention and life became so much better. And it, it's crazy because ever since that moment in time of me just really pursuing myself, like I've just developed, and I'm sure you a lot feel this as well, and like other people um, that are on this similar path, I guess you could say, just feel so comfortable in their own skin, you know what I mean? And they just feel so alive, you know what I mean? And they just recognize, like, like we were talking about before, how valuable their life is, right? And even though at times they may just get stuck in that kind of mindset of like, oh, chasing, chasing, chasing. I don't have this, right? And I feel like I have nothing, right? No, it's kind of like the flip side of that. Like, no, dude, I have everything, right? And what I'm chasing is just a mi minor thing that I do on a daily basis. But if I don't get it tomorrow or the next day, I'll be okay. If you were to just build some fucking winning habits, <laughs> you would really stop idolizing people. Yeah. Like, you look at people like Elon Musk or any or the Kardashians or any of these celebrities, and you put these people on a pedestal because you don't feel adequate with yourself. Yeah. If you started taking care of your mental health, your physical health, your relationships, like, if you started taking care of the things that really fucking matter and started being okay with you, you would realize you don't want to be anybody else. Yeah. You don't want Elon Musk's money. You don't want Kim Kardashian's amount of followers on Instagram because you don't care anymore. You want to be you. Yeah, and, uh, and if that means you're going to be famous and make a lot of money, or it means you're going to work in typical nine you to don't five, even care and, about that, and be on thirteen softball teams, it won't matter to yeah. you. But it's because it started with your habits. You start taking care of your body, start exercising, you start taking care of your relationships, being more empathetic, building the relationships that you need to build, getting rid of the friends that are loser friends that are bringing you down. Yeah. Like the, these, this cliche, these cliche things that we all know we should be doing but aren't doing. If you were to start implementing those habits into your life. You would no longer give a fuck because when you love yourself, you're good. You're actually good. Yeah. It's not, oh, I'm worthy. No, no. It's you feel worthy. You can't just mouth the fucking words. It's cute to say it. You can't. Yeah. It's impossible. But once you spend, what, two, three, four, five years consistently grinding on you, you're going to stop idolizing these other people because you're going to realize inherently that you don't want to be anybody else but you. Yeah. When you work on you, you're going to get to a spot where you don't want to be anybody else, so you don't idolize anybody else with more money or who's hotter or has more Instagram followers or more likes or comments or shares. Yeah. You're not going to give a fuck because you're good with you. But until you start acting that way and start treating yourself like you love yourself, you're not going to love yourself. Mm -hmm. Wow, what a brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. Treat yourself that way, and as a byproduct, you're going to stop giving a fuck about what other people say about you. Yeah. You're going to stop giving a fuck about how much money you have in comparison to Elon Musk. You're going to stop give a fuck, giving a fuck about how many followers you have compared to Cristiano Ronaldo. Because you're going to realize that the only thing that matters is how you feel about you at the end of the day. That's the mm -hmm. only thing that matters. Mm -hmm. But until you start behaving that way, you're going to keep putting these people on a pedestal. You're going to keep putting these ideas and these materialistic things on a pedestal because that's the only way for you to gravitate towards this is what I want to be. And if that's what you want to be, you really need to reflect yeah. on what are you doing with your time? Yeah. I personally, like, I defy you to tell me somebody that takes care of their body, takes care of their mental health, takes care of their physical health, has a career that they're passionate about and finds meaningful, that is living a life where they want to be Kim K. Yeah. 
Or they want to be Cristiano Ronaldo. Or they wish they had the money of Floyd Mayweather. Or they wish they had the success of Elon Musk. They don't. They really don't. And it doesn't matter if they make $30,000 a year or $30 billion a year. It doesn't make any difference. If they're living a meaningful life where they're taking care of themselves and have winning habits, they don't idolize other people. They don't. It just works that way. It's like when you, like you said, develop that kind of self-love, right? And you develop that kind of, you allow your authenticity to flow through by turning the attention inwards. You begin to see celebrities and people that you look up to, look up to, um, or mentors, whatever. Mm. You begin to see them for who they actually are, right? And it's like when when we met like David Meltzer, for instance, or we met like, I don't know, when we were around Geno Smith, right? Like yeah. one of the best women's basketball coaches of all time, coaches in general. Like yeah. I feel, or at least I don't know if you feel this way, but like I, I don't feel like starstruck, right? Like I, it's just like you just, you recognize them for who you are. You recognize them yeah. as a human being, right? Like, yes, they're famous, right? Like, yes, they're, they've done amazing things. But like I said before, they're no different than you. You know what I mean? It's like we just put people on this pedestal and I'm guilty of this myself without a doubt. Like, no, <laughs> I'm like, I'm right there. You know what right. I mean? But you just recognize them as a human being. Right. And through you recognizing them as a human being, there's such a low distance between you in your reality. Like there's just such a lower distance between right. where they are and where you are. Right. Like, so, and when, when there is that large distance, when there is that, keeping miles between each other the farther and farther you are away from your authenticity yeah. right like the the less you can relate to that person the well, less because well, that distance is not real yeah exactly exactly it's all mental distance right. right exactly exactly and um the more you're able to kind of overcome that conditioning from whatever you're 30 20 40 years of believing that those people up there are way different than you, right. the more you're going to be able to live a life where you're more, I guess you could say, in tune with who you actually are. You know what I mean? And that conditioning is so hard to overcome because, like I said before, one, it's so tempting, and two, it's just how you're programmed, right? So it's like, I, I don't know that I'm sure you know better than me, but like your first five to 12 years, right? I'm pretty sure, at least according to psychologists, like that's, those are the years where you're programmed the most, right? Yep. So if your parents are, and I'm sure your parents can relate to this and my parents can relate to this a lot, and other people's parents condition you to believe that these celebrities are where you want to be and that's like the most glamorous life, right? right? It's going to take you a long time, or I could just say Western culture in, in general, yeah. right? Yeah. It's going to take you a really long time to overcome that. So if you're in a spot where you're starting to work on yourself, right? You're eating healthy, you're going to the gym, you're meditating, you're chasing after, like you said before, a career that you're really passionate about. If you're feeling these, these old traces of kind of falling back into the subconscious programming of believing that the glamorous life is the life you want. Just take a step back and come back to that realization, right? It's just like when you're meditating, right? And you're just in that mindful kind of state where you, you're supposed to be, for instance, focusing on your breath, right? And your mind drifts off, right? right? Just bring it back to your breath, bring it back to that realization. And the more you do that and you just kind of observe rather than forcing yourself mm. to, like, no, dude, I'm going to focus on myself. I'm going to do all these different types of things. Just let it pass through, right? Let it do its thing and less resistance will be caused. And you'll actually be able to feel more peaceful in that moment in time, right? In that realization, you'll be able to enact it um, a lot quicker than as if you were trying to actively pursue it. Right. I mean, the most concrete advice that I can give on this idea is to unfollow everybody <laughs> on all your social media yeah. platforms. It, the, the, the most profound thing that I did in the past mm. five years was unfollow all of my friends. That's a good point. I don't follow any of my friends. Alex. But yeah. I've been best friends with him for how many fucking years? Yeah. Like 12 years. I unfollowed him on Instagram. Everybody, I got hundreds of messages from my friends, from my high school friends. Why would you unfollow me? I don't understand. I'm like, Cause you don't post anything that, like, that educates me or inspires me to be a, be a better human being. Well, but we're, how are you going to, 
if I give a fuck about you and you give a fuck about me, I'll reach out to you. I'll call you. I'll text you. How you been? What's new? What's exciting? I don't need to see pictures of your ass in the Bahamas. <laughs> I don't need to like and comment on your post for you to know that I care about you. Yeah. If you need me to follow you, to like your post, to comment, you're so pretty, for you to know that I care about you, that's a you problem. That's a you problem. I'm not going to follow you because, A, comparing myself, comparing my life to your fluffed up highlight reel of who you are is only going to make me feel shitty about me. But B, I don't want to become addicted to these platforms and no longer spend my time doing things that are actually empowering me to be a better human being, to be to become more successful, to become more fulfilled. Dude, I do that all the time. Do what? What you just said. Compare? Dude, like what you just said, I resonate with so much. Yeah, dude. Like comment on someone's post in order to know that they care about you. Right. I've done that within this past week. Right. So many times, right? And I'm not saying that to... I'm, I'm being vulnerable right yeah, now, yeah. okay? Like, th- I do that, right? And a lot of people do, like, like right. wow, Cal, like, really, you do? Yes, I do, right? Yeah. And it's, when I say it, I, I have a pit in my stomach saying it, but I yeah. do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, I don't like saying this right now. Yeah. But, like, for instance, like, whether it be a certain person that I want to get closer to, yeah. I do it. You right. know what I mean? But I'm doing it for the wrong reasons. Right. And for me, like, it's so true. Like, I shouldn't need to, and I'm not saying, like, anybody's, like, saying this to me, but, like, I'm saying this to myself. Like, I, sh- in my opinion, like, f- to define a friendship, like, I should not, n- in order to ensure the healthiness of our relationship and things of that nature, right. I do not need to comment about something. I do not need to like a post. I do not need to right. pay attention and snap you within 10 minutes or something like that. You know, like, yeah. And I'm not saying I'm like this all the time, right? But, like, I have fallen into this kind of activity recently. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it happens. You know what I mean? And, and then when you get caught in that kind of mental state where you are doing things and you don't even recognize it, yeah. then it just becomes an autopilot habit, right? And I can really see myself falling into that a lot, man. You know what I mean? It's so easy, too. And you're way better than 99% of people. <laughs> like, And that's what's scary. Mm. That is what's scary. And, like... I don't know. I always corner people with this conversation, and it's uncomfortable. It is. It's for sure uncomfortable. It is. Yeah. But people will always be like, well, no, uh, you should follow me because we're friends, and you should comment and like my post because you know that it makes me feel good, and it yeah. reminds me that you care about me. It's, it's like, okay, why does that make you feel good? Why? It's not for you. It's because... You want to appear significant yeah. by having another person comment. Absolutely. By having a number of more people liked your post. Yeah. It has nothing to do with our relationship and everything to do with you filling a gap. And I'm not going to participate in that. I'm not. I won't. I refuse to. And I don't care what you think. It doesn't fucking matter. It sucked for a couple months. Keep getting to continue getting texts, to continue getting texts, to continue getting texts. Why aren't you following me? Why aren't you liking my posts anymore? I don't understand. Do you not like me? Are you just cutting people off? Most people thought I was doing it to feel significant so that my yeah. follower ratio would be better. <laughs> it's like, motherfucker, you don't understand. Yeah. I'm not, I don't want it to appear like I, I follow like, what, like nine people. You think I'm fucking following nine people <laughs> because I want to look cool? Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I know how to grow a social media account. I could grow a social media account to a million followers if I wanted to. It would be easy. Yeah, just post three times a day of <laughs> other people and make it look. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. I could do it. You could do it. Yeah. Anybody could fucking do yeah. it. If I wanted followers, if I wanted a sick ratio, I could fucking do it. Yeah, it's not about that. I don't want to consume content where I'm looking at you and comparing myself to you and making myself feel like shit inherently because I'm comparing my life to your fucking highlight reel while I'm sitting there scrolling. For what? For what? The reason why you feel good when I comment and like and share and whatever the fuck you want is because you're filling a gap because you're in the same fucking game. Mm. I'm not going to play the game. If I care about you, I'll reach out to you. Mm. If I want to know what's up with you, I'll ask you what's up with you. I don't need to look at your ass or your (laughs) abs or you fucking throw money on your yacht to know what's going on in your life. I don't need to. And not for nothing, the people that are posting those things are the most miserable fucking people. Because the most miserable people are the ones trying the hardest to fill that gap. Mm. Those are the most miserable people. 
I'm not going to play the fucking game. I refuse to. I'm done. I, I won't. That's yeah. why I don't follow my girlfriend. That's why I don't follow Alex. They don't post things that inspire me. They don't. They really don't. And so when you take offense to me not following you back on Instagram, it's a direct reflection on how you feel about yourself. Mm. If you need me to follow you, to like your post, to comment, or whatever, for you to know that I care about you, your idea on what a good relationship is, is broken. It's completely broken. It's flipped. So what is a good relationship then? That's up for you to decide. But if you can keep asking yourself why, and it's not a moral answer, then it's fucked. But human beings are human beings. Yeah. We're not, we are all very unique, but we're not that unique. Mm. If I keep asking you, why do you need me to comment on your post, <laughs> we're going to get to a shitty answer. <laughs> we're going to get to a shitty yeah. answer. Or we're going to get to a circular answer of you lying saying, yeah. it just They're makes me feel good. Me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that's where it goes 99% of the time. Yeah. And the other percent of the time, it's people that have the humility to admit that the reason that they want me to comment and like and share and follow is because they're filling a fucking gap. Yeah. And then they're like, mm, damn. Why does everyone have that similar programming? Because we're wired to fit in with the tribe. Mm -hmm. When 99% of people are doing something, biologically, we are wired to follow that path because if you're sticking out like a sore thumb, you're going to die. That's how we're wired. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that's how we're meant to thrive. Mm -hmm. And so if you're in a position where, you know, you're just playing the game and you get sucked in, then for you to go against the social norms is you kicking yourself out of the yeah. tribe. Yeah, but like why? I don't think it's like a norm thing. Because like I'm trying to get, why do people feel the need to, or why do they, why do people base their relationship off of, why do people in order for them to feel they need a good relationship, need others to comment. Like, because to me, that doesn't seem like a very much of a norm thing or fitting with well, the it's tribe. Not, it's not the truth. That's not reality. Mm -hmm. Like, you, the reason why you want people to comment, like, and share is because yeah. you have a desire to feel significant. Okay, gotcha. And the reason you have that desire that to feel significant sense. is because you want to fill some sort of gap. Yeah, Like, gotcha. we all want to fill that gap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's this fucking... It's like... You're feeling the same amount of dopamine that a king was a hundred years ago. Yeah. Like, that's insane. Yeah. You have a thousand people like your post. That's insane. A thousand fucking people. If you had a thousand people in the room all saying, that's amazing, that's amazing, that's amazing, and a thousand people were saying that, you'd be like, what the fuck? That's how kings felt back in the yeah. day. Yeah. And you can just get it like posting your ass. <laughs> like, and so. <laughs> yeah, that's a great point. And so the second someone Damn. goes against that ideology and that philosophy of this is how I'm going to go about feeling good about who I am, yeah. it's a direct threat to the philosophy and the ideology that you're living with on what you, what, on what the grounds are for you feeling good about you, for you being happy, for you feeling fulfilled. Mm -hmm. But it's broken. Yeah. It's, a, it's a cheap game. Yeah. It's a game that's quick and then gone. Get a thousand likes in your post. How good do you feel? How long do you feel good for? And then guess what? Then the bar is set at a thousand. Yeah. And then you get 700 likes and you feel like a piece of shit. And then what happens when you get a million likes? Then the bar is at a million. I know directly what it feels like with my fucking TikTok. Yeah. I know what you're going through. <laughs> I got sucked back into the game even when I had unfollowed everybody because of the account that I was creating. It flipped. Yeah. And now it was... Oh, fuck. <laughs> I don't have a million likes on my post. I'm a piece of garbage. Now five million views. What <laughs> shitty content I'm putting out. Like, I, I, I get it more than 99% yeah. of people get it. I yeah. fucking understand. You get it more than 99% of people get it. Like, <laughs> I fucking understand what you're going through. Mm. But for you to sit there and tell me that in order for you to know that you're loved by me, I need to like your post and comment and share and do whatever the fuck is insane. It's so funny because like I feel like that's what I'm supposed to do. You know what I mean? And it's like it's <laughs> dude, like no, it's not what you're supposed to do. You know what so I mean? You like, feel like you're not, you're not liking it because you actually like it. You're right. liking it because you feel like you have to in order to ensure the status of your relationship. Like you're you're liking things for the wrong reason, you know what I mean? And I think do their posts provide <laughs> value? Yes or fucking no. Yeah. 99.9999999% of accounts do not provide value yeah. to anyone but the person posting the fucking pictures and videos. Yeah. 
Why are you following the account? Why? You're playing the same stupid game everybody else is playing, and that's why you're fucking miserable. Yeah. Because you're comparing yourself to someone else's fucking highlight reel, yeah, and then you feel the need to post your fucking highlight reel. Yeah. For what? For what reason? You have no good reason, and this is why you're miserable. And until you decide to have the strength to take yourself out of the fucking game, you're going to stay in the same exact spot that you're in, no matter how much you're trying to make your life better. If you keep comparing yourself to fluffed up, fucked up, highlighted versions of everybody else's lives, you're going to feel like shit because it's never going to be good enough because it's not real. And if you're basing that because you think that in order for you to feel connected and loved by people, you need to follow them and like and comment and share and they need to do the same for you, you're going to stay in the same stupid fucking game forever. You need to have the humility to bring yourself down to the point where you realize that it doesn't fucking matter and then unfollow those people. Stop engaging in the fucking game. Get out of the fucking game. Or just get off social media in general, right. dude. Like, You know what's funny, too? The second I unfollowed so many people, I had on my like normal like my account that I, I, it's fucking yeah. ghost town now, but the, the account that I used growing up when I was playing the same game as everybody else, just posting my highlight reel and you know yeah. commenting and liking everybody else's highlight reel, I had like, I probably had like a thousand followers. Let me check how many I have now. The second people found out, I didn't fucking. 586. Wow, dude. The amount of people that unfollowed me because I didn't follow them anymore. Half. Half of them. The yeah. second. I wonder how many just don't even know that I don't follow their account anymore and would unfollow me the second yeah. they found out. Like, think about that. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Like, no, of course, of course. Yeah. But think about that. Yeah. And yeah, I guess. I. <laughs> Why are you following yeah, somebody? Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, because like, no, like, and I think like a big, and I think just like to kind of not let this interpretation go, like that. I just feel myself kind of falling into that habit. You know what I mean? And it's like, like you said, like I've I've experienced the flip side too. You know what I mean? Like that one Russell Brand video that I did that. I just screen recorded it. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, dude, I I did not do that. That was all Russell Brand. You know, like, yeah. but I just. <laughs> Just happened to pass through my account, you know right, what I mean? Right. It's like, I, like I, I experienced the flip side of that too, or just as a content creator in general, like you start to pay attention to those things. It's, it's, it's just obviously, you know, like I mean, I don't get on social media until like seven at night, you know what I mean? So it's like I have that bar, but like when I'm on social media, I feel those old inklings, like in my old conditioning, fall back through. You know what I mean? It's like. A lot of the times, like, I'm liking things for the wrong reasons, right? Not a lot of the times. Like, for sometimes, like, I'm liking things for the wrong reason, right? I'm doing and following accounts for the wrong reason, right? Um, And I, I could easily see someone getting, like, a misinterpretation of, like, uh, kind of what I was saying before. Mm -hmm. It's This is not, like, my dominant kind of habit on social media. Like, I, right. I consume a lot of self-improvement content. Like, I don't follow girls that shake their ass, like, and things like that. You know, like, right. it's very much cleaned up. But, like, but the people that I do follow, such as my friends, you know, yeah. uh, other family members um, that I know I interact with on a regular basis, like, mm -hmm. I, that, sure, I may like their post, right? Like, partially. But the reason for why I'm liking it is not completely because I like it, right? It's it's for that other reason. And I think a lot of times, too, when people get into the area of, like, content creation, such as fitness or self-improvement or just really anything like that, they start to post content. And we're both victims of this, right? They start to post content not about the genuine message at hand, right? And so it's like when you're posting self-improvement content, right, a lot of the times. Um, so ironic. Yeah, I know, I know. It literally is. Yeah. It, it, like, a lot of times, like, you'll just you'll just be posting content, right, and – and you'll just be thinking about what you're, the audience is going to say in regards mm. to this, but you, you don't even know what the message is at hand. You know right. what I mean? Like, you should be putting out this message and making it appear as best as possible, right? Because of the genuine message at hand, not because of what the audience is going to say, right? If the audience hates it, they hate it, right? If er, And I should say there is partially, there is like a marketing aspect to it, so that should be taken into account, right? Like right. a positioning side to it. So that does yeah. mean but something. it shouldn't be the priority. It should not be the priority. So it should be like 80% the message at hand and 20% the other. Like how does this right. look, right? And how did, how is this positioned, right? And it's just sometimes too, if that becomes flipped, right? It gets, it's very, it gets very slippery very quick, you know what I mean? And we're both victims of this, you know what I mean? I've been feeling it a lot recently, but it's just more so you calling back on that realization. And I hope, I hope, I hope someone can see this and really, you know, right. just learn from it like us, you know what I mean? Um, and just, uh, yeah, really not allow it to get to them, you know? So would you still post it if no one was going to like it? Yeah. 
Would you still post it if no one was going to comment or share whatever the fuck you want? If the answer is no, don't post it. If you follow this person's account, is it going to make you feel better and empowered and motivated to be a better human being? If the answer is no, don't follow the fucking account. Yeah. That's the game. If you're following an account because you, it's coming from a, a gap of insecurity of, well, you want to follow them so that they'll follow you. Or you want to follow them so that they'll follow you and then they'll comment and they'll like and they'll share. And it'll make you feel more significant. You're playing the game. Get out of the fucking game. Nice. Nice.